Welcome to the Paranormal Deep Dive from Real Ghost Stories Online and the Grave Talks. You ever get that feeling like some places are just magnets for spooky stories? Mm-hmm. Today's deep dive, we're heading straight into one of those hull houses right here in Chicago. Mm-hmm. But and, you know, this is not just about like surface level ghost stories. We're going deeper. Oh, for sure. Way more to it than that. What's so interesting about Hull House is that it was a place of incredible hope for people, new to the city especially, which is such a contrast to all the creepy stories you hear about it. Like a whole other layer on top of it. Yeah. So set the scene for us. We're talking like turn of the century, Chicago's booming, Mm -hmm. but life for a lot of people, especially immigrants, was really tough. That's where Jane Addams and Ellen Gates star come in, right? What made them start Hull House in the first place? They were driven by this, honestly, this profound sense of, you could call it social responsibility. Adams and Starr saw the poverty, people crammed into tiny spaces, no opportunities, and they thought, we have to create a place that gives actual help and a sense of community. So you've got this city changing so fast, Mm -hmm. and Whole House is like this bright spot in the middle of it. Daycare, job training, even art classes talk about ambitious. But then, mixed in with all that good stuff, is this legend of the devil baby. Now, I've heard bits and pieces, but you tell it. Okay, so picture this. A baby is born, but it's got horns, hooves, glowing eyes, the works. The story goes that the parents were so scared, they didn't know where else to turn, so they brought this baby to Hull House. Now, Jane Addams, she always denied it, said it wasn't true, but you know how it is. Some stories just have a life of their own. Like the echoes of it are still there, even today. And it's easy to see why that one stuck around. Think about it coming to a whole new country, a new city. Everything's different must have been a lot to deal with. For sure. Urban legends, they're often like a mirror to what people are scared of at that time. The devil baby with everything creepy about it might have been tapping into fears about immigration, how fast things were changing, maybe even how society itself was shifting. Makes you think, if those walls could talk. (laughs) Right. And the devil baby is just one story out of whole house. There are all these others, too, about shadowy figures, weird noises, the whole nine yards. Yeah, you're right. And those stories, they get even more complex when you think about the actual building itself, a place where people were cared for, but also where they were really vulnerable. Yeah. And when you say shadowy figures and weird noises, I mean, those are like the most common things people talk about. There are so many stories like people seeing a woman dressed in clothes from the 1800s walking through the halls. Lots of people think it's Jane Addams herself. Whoa, that's eerie, especially with how much she cared about that place. Like a part of her never left. But you know what gets me? The whispers people hear in other languages? What's up with that? Oh, man, that's one of the things that makes Hull House so fascinating, right? Imagine hearing these quiet voices, little pieces of conversation, but you can't even understand what they're saying, all happening in those same rooms where immigrants used to gather from all over the world. Now you're just trying to give me goosebumps, aren't you? It's like the walls are holding on to those voices from so long ago, these little pieces of people's lives. And then there are those stories about the former daycare center. Those always get to me. Oh, yeah, the daycare center. That's definitely a hot spot. Visitors and staff have said they hear kids laughing or crying, even little footsteps running around, but there's nobody there. Okay, see, now that's just creepy. And there's that one about the rocking chair. Oh, yeah, that's a classic. Somebody said they were just walking by and they saw this rocking chair going back and forth, back and forth, like someone was pushing it, but there was nobody there. Okay, yeah, nope, that's just not right. It's so weird how those stories get to you. Even if you try to tell yourself, it's just people making things up, you know, Mm. especially something like that. A rocking chair should be peaceful, but it's not. Totally. Our brains, they try to make sense of things that don't make sense. You know, like we want to find a reason, even if there isn't one. And rocking chairs, we think of them as safe, comforting. Mm. So when you see one moving by itself, it just feels wrong. Like something's broken, you know, something that's supposed to be one way isn't. But one of the things that I find really interesting is how often people say the upper rooms of Whole House are like the center of all the weird stuff. Uh, The upper rooms. Even if we say the devil baby story was totally made up, just the fact that people connect those rooms to it, it's like they've become even creepier because of it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like by putting that story in that place, we've made it easier for our minds to take anything strange that happens there and turn it into something scary. Yeah, You got it. The power of suggestion. It's a real thing. And it's not just our imaginations running wild either. You know, there have been all those paranormal investigators going to Hull House with their equipment and everything, trying to find proof. Don't tell me they actually found something. What did they find? Well, they say they've got these recordings, EVPs, where you can hear these faint voices. One of them 
some people swear it sounds like someone saying, help me, real quiet and breathy. And then there are the cold spots in the house. They say they happen in the same places where people have seen things or felt like someone was there. Okay, you know, I got to admit, that's pretty freaky. <laughs> but, you know, I try to keep an open mind, but I also try not to just believe everything I hear. Couldn't those cold spots just be drafts? I mean, it's an old building. That's the big question, isn't it? Old buildings like Hull House, they're famous for being drafty. So, yeah, it's totally possible those cold spots are just, you know, how the building is. Yeah, it's like you're trying to explain away a feeling, you know? Because okay. even if there's a perfectly normal reason for it, old houses especially, there's just something about them. All that history yeah. makes you wonder. Totally. And that's exactly what makes Hull House so interesting. You've got the history, the social activism, and then all these stories about what we can't explain. All rolled into one. Yeah. And it's a museum now, right? People can actually go there. Yeah, you can visit. It's like this monument to what Adams and Starr started, a place where you can learn about the whole settlement house movement and how much it changed things. But no doubt about it, people are drawn to the spoopy stuff, too. All right. So you've got these history buffs walking around next to, I don't know, ghost hunters. Yeah. All in the same place for different reasons. That's got to lead to some interesting conversations. Oh, I bet. And it shows you how powerful a place like Whole House can be. It's like this physical connection to the past, you know, where history and stories and all that, it just mixes together. It really makes you think after hearing all this about Whole House, the stories, the people, the history, it's like these places are more than just, I don't know, wood and nails. They hold on to things our fears, the things we find fascinating, all of it. What gets me is how these stories, people have been telling them for ages, but they still mean something to us now. Doesn't matter if you believe in ghosts or just like a good scary story, Hull House just gets under your skin. So what do you think? Why do these stories stick around? Even when people say there's no such thing as ghosts or whatever. Maybe deep down, we all want there to be something beyond what we can see, you know, like a peek behind the curtain. Or, hey, maybe it's just fun to be creeped out sometimes. A little reminder that there are still mysteries out there. A little bit of both? Maybe? Well, I've got to say, this deep dive into Hull House has been wild. We've gone from its beginnings as this place of hope right into the creepy legends that have been around forever. And we even got into that whole question of what happens when the lights go out? Do the stories, you know, become real? Exactly. And the best part, if you're ever in Chicago, especially when it starts getting dark... Take a walk past Hull House. You might just feel a chill or a whisper on the back of your neck. You never know. You might add your own chapter to the story of Hull House. Now that's something to think about. Thanks for joining us for this deep dive into Hull House. Until next time, keep exploring, keep asking questions, and whatever you do, don't go to Hull House alone. Want to dig deeper in the paranormal deep dive? Press subscribe now wherever you download podcasts and catch brand new paranormal deep dives every single day from Real Ghost Stories Online and the Grave Talks podcast.